And boom. That is pretty awesome. Look at what I can actually do in here. Let's add some water and let's put some more powders. And now let's put some uranium. And let the nuclear reaction start. Boom, here we go. All right, welcome to What The Math, this is Anton, and today we're taking a look at a pretty awesome, absolutely free educational game called The Powder Toy. This was actually recommended to me by one of my students by the name of Andrew. Thank you, Andrew. I have not known about this game. This is actually pretty awesome, and this is absolutely free, so we have to take a look at it. Welcome and enjoy the video, and let's find out what we can do in this game. <laughs> And let's actually start by explaining what this game is. So this is actually a new genre of games known as falling sand games, where essentially you have these sand effects, and if I can show it to you by using basically sand here. And is um, so it's very realistically a represented uh, sand effect game, but this has reached complexity to the point where you don't just get falling sand, but you actually get the interaction between each of the particles, and including things like gas, for example. And so here, if I were to actually go into, let's just say, uh, plutonium, place a bunch of it on the surface of this moon, and then add a little bit of, let's just say, I don't know, neutrinos to it, guess what would happen? That's right, nuclear explosion. Isn't that awesome? So this essentially is an absolutely amazing free simulator that allows you to recreate these chemical reactions, nuclear reactions. You even have some... Oh, this is pretty awesome. My moon is melting. No. Uh, there's even something called um, Game of Life here where you can even simulate things like life, essentially. And uh, if you don't really know how to start with this, well, the best way to do um, that is to start or open a simulation right here. You may want to actually log in and create an account, and all of this is absolutely free. And once you open um, various simulations here, there's just so much stuff going on here. So I actually am looking at space only, but there's basically various um, popular tags here, popular criteria, and you can kind of click on whatever you want. You can, you know, look at various cities that people made, and this is all basically created by random people here and there, and you can kind of open them up and vote for them, and uh, this has a 2011 Powdy Awards, apparently. And uh, so some of them actually have interactive components, and some of them are just kind of funny-looking um, creations. And this one, I think, is just a, an actual functioning city that has a satellite with some, some sort of a satellite dish here. There's, like, people in there. And uh, so someone actually created this. And, of course, you can just go ahead and add more neutrinos everywhere just to kind of see what happens and let's find out if we can cause some sort of a cool reaction by adding a random amount of stuff everywhere including deuterium which is of course heavy water that is often used in nuclear reactions you can add some photons and here comes the large explosion and fire of this beautiful city that had 2011 award not anymore now it's just a very very 2011 now it's just uh, a dead city that I'm about to destroy. Anyway, so that's one of the things you can do. Obviously, you can kind of uh, destroy various creations. But the fun thing here is just to explore and just to see what's going on. So, And let's actually take a look at some of my favorite simulations here. And this is, of course, space simulations. There's quite a lot of really, really awesome stuff out there. This is the one we looked at before. Um, now, some of them are absolutely awesome. Like this right here, this was actually this was mind-blowing. Micro Universe Simulator. So if we were to start this... This essentially shows you um, how potentially the universe was created. It kind of shows you the Big Bang. And there's actually a bit of a description of what's going on. So phase one, the Big Bang. Phase two, matter conglomeration. Phase three, star fusion commencement. And you will get to see all of this as basically the simulation progresses. And someone actually created this from scratch. So right now you can kind of see that there's these like stars that are going to be formed soon. Uh, then we'll have nebula for formation. Then we'll have star merging and expiration, which basically means that they'll go supernova. And uh, there might even be a black hole creation, which uh, this game actually does have black holes. Uh, I think they're under right here special. So there's black hole and white hole. Now, the, the best part about this, especially if you want to use this in class, is that it actually simulates physics and chemistry relatively accurately. And specifically here, like, let's just... Um, we're going to create a completely new simulation. 
and what i am going to do here is place a white hole around this area so this will now um sort of push things toward the center and uh what you can basically start doing is just you know uh, experiment with various things like for example let's put a bunch of hydrogen in the middle this is under gases of course put some hydrogen in here and you can start a simulation there's, there's going to be gas everywhere and it's going to be kind of stuck in the middle you can now maybe put some noble gas that's helium and stuff like that you can put some water in there um Oh, that's actually steam uh let's just put a bunch of stuff including co2 and now uh maybe add a little bit of uh neutrons so we're going to go under special here and add a few neutrons and see if anything starts happening in this uh, artificially created thingy so you can see they start uh, to separate into layers and neutrons are still in the middle i'm going to also add some protons and this will will very likely create more hydrogen because neutrons plus protons is what essentially creates hydrogen and you'll get to kind of see the formation as it occurs and the, um, so the red stuff here is protons they're going to be mixing up with the blue stuff which is um, which is uh, neutrons and uh, they will be creating hydrogen which I believe is this blue thingy here now um that's just a start and you can actually even go as far th uh, as far as basically create a nuclear reaction by and there there's actually there's a formation of hydrogen you can basically create a nuclear reaction by just you know continuously adding things or making pressure higher like this pressure values right here you can cr uh, create a nuclear reaction here by you know adding so much material uh, that this will eventually just start lighting up and um start producing more uh, more different materials and i'm going to try to simulate this right now by basically continuously adding protons and we're going to start and let's let's actually just see what we can actually create so right now we're at uh, co2 as our heaviest um, element but i want to see if i can create something else so there's actually a nuclear reaction going on right now you can kind of see the fire and the heat here and let's see if the color of this changes and what it's going to become and I just added a bit of electrons and this is what started happening so I just had a very large explosion on the inside I'm not sure if this is going to create anything new but we'll see there's uh, obviously a little bit of co2 in here there's some noble glass protons and I think my I am my other materials are all gone but basically yeah this is one of the ways you can experiment by changing various things by adding various things you can uh, play around with a lot of this stuff like there's an antimatter here that will actually destroy normal matter and create energy there is some antimatter there and look at that this is beautiful you can um, also add things like um, black holes for example here is going to be a black hole right here it's going to start sucking things in and creating these really awesome effects and we can add more deut deuterium as well just to maybe create some more explosions as soon as we add more neutrons so um for me personally this is just fun to explore because you can actually almost uh simulate uh, pretty much anything you would want to simulate especially when it comes to like space sciences um or kind of uh, any kind of physics any kind of chemical reactions you can basically do quite a lot of really really awesome stuff like like let's just wait for this to finish and see what happens and this is actually a really awesome looking reaction but if i were to create a completely new simulation and just add like a black hole in the middle I could then try to simulate um hydrogen orbiting around black hole or at least uh sort of forming into something we can just basically add a bunch of hydrogen here and then see what happens if we maybe include another black hole somewhere uh, on the on the side here just to give this some motion and there i've added some protons as well and protons have reacted with my hydrogen creating a very large explosion that then disperses into what seems to be just protons and so i think that's just one of the ways you can basically play around with this there's obviously quite a lot of various things you can do what i actually enjoy doing is trying to recreate a planetary formation before so like if you were to add a little bit of molten lava here oh actually it's falling down i don't want it to fall down i'm going to go into options here and disable so we're gonna actually make sure that um, this stuff just stays inside the screen by looping it and we're going to disable vertical gravity instead of make radial gravity 
So now all my lava is going to be at the center. So now you can kind of see where I'm going with this. I'm going to add a, a bit more lava. Let's add some um, iron as well. Where is our iron? There's various uh, metals here and here is iron. I'm going to just kind of draw it here. It's going to melt eventually uh, because this is a pretty realistic simulation. You can kind of see it melting already. Let's add maybe a little bit more lava so that it actually melts a little bit faster. We're going to put some lava on top of it. Um, and all of this will start sort of differentiating to layers as my iron sort of goes toward the center of this um, this bowl. And then lava is obviously just rock. This is um, you know, molten lava is nothing but silicates that were melted and then uh, essentially if you, they solidify they become rock. And we're going to try to simulate this by just adding a few more things here. I think I should have added more metal but that's okay. And so now that we have our silicate layer, basically this is lava, let's actually start adding a little bit of water and see what happens. So first of all, because of the heat, water will start evaporating, obviously. But over time, as I keep adding more of this, you'll notice that there will be a change in reaction. And now uh, things will start to change on the surface as well. And you can kind of even check the temperature here by going close to the layer on top and just seeing what the temperature in, in this region right here says. So right now we're at 12 degrees Celsius. This is obviously still molten lava. And because of the high temperatures here, all of my water from the surface unfortunately started to evaporate, but it will eventually start hardening up and create a hard layer on the surface. So you can kind of see that it's already changing in color. It's uh, becoming a little bit cooler on the outside and only hot on the inside. And as I'm adding more and more of water and as I'm cooling this down, it's obviously going to start acquiring a bit of a hard surface on, um, on top here. Any second now, it will start changing into a relatively Earth or planet looking shape. And look at that. Here is the first formation of stone. The surface has finally started to solidify and will now slowly create a hard shell around this. It will st still keep melting once in a while because there's still a lot of temperature here. But this kind of gives you an idea of what the early uh, planet and specifically early Earth was very likely doing when it was still a molten bowl of lava. So it took quite a while for it to kind of acquire this hard shell. And uh, there's going to be still a very large volcano right here. But as it basically solidifies, it will at some point become a hard sort of rock. Now, uh, sometimes when I do this correctly, I'll usually have like a layer of rock on top and then I'll have um, a, a liquid layer of lava and then I'll have my iron in the middle. But this time, because I did this very, very roughly, uh, you can kind of see that it's not, it didn't really differentiate as well. So I have this chunk of iron in the middle and I have my stone right here and my lava is still kind of solidifying on the surface here. But basically with time, there you go. There is our planet. Not so much Earth, but just some random planet. And you can obviously add some water to the surface as well if you add more water. And as the temperature has fallen below 100 degrees Celsius, which is the evaporation temperature for water, uh, we'll start acquiring a liquid layer of water right on the surface and create an actual living and breathing world. You can obviously then start playing around with things like life and things like, uh, like we can actually go in here and possibly start planting seeds or uh, create some kind of a... Oh boy, that's not exactly what I wanted. I don't actually know what seeds are, but turns out this destroys my world. Well, goodbye planet Earth. I actually thought that this is going to create life, but it created nothing but death. But anyway, so that's essentially how this game works in a nutshell. Whoa, this is pretty awesome. That is an amazing effect. I don't even know what I just did. But yeah, there's a lot of different things you can do here. There's a lot of different special effects. There's a lot of different buttons. Uh, there's quite a, a variety of things you can explore with your students or just by yourself if you're learning things. And of course, you can just go into the simulations that have already been pre-created for you. Like, for example, there is something called Rainbow Beam. And if I were to open this up, look at what you get. This is awesome. This is some sort of a prism that creates these various colors that you can explore, obviously, in a physics class or something. 
So there's just a variety of things that have already been pre-created. There's a lot of ways to, for you to basically uh, try to create your own simulations and try to be creative in exploring various physical and chemical reactions. And the fact that this is absolutely free is, you know, mind-blowing because games like this uh, teach you a lot but uh, need a lot more recognition and a lot more promotion as well. Now, this is actually a genre that has been around since 2005, I think. And uh, I didn't really know much about it until very recently because um, this is a type of game that a lot of people do play, but it's not as popular as some other games. But uh, these games definitely need to be used in a classroom, and I think they have so much potential as well. And the fact that there's already so many simulations that have already been pre-made for you with pretty good descriptions and explanations makes me really, really happy. Like, for example, this right here is called Rubidium Crystal. And it, what it does is it, first of all, it creates uh, this crystal that then becomes electrified. And it says, add water once it's fully formed. So take a guess what's going to happen when you add water to rubidium. That's right, a very, very big explosion. Absolutely awesome. Anyway, so that's uh, the powder toy in a nutshell. I'm posting the link for this game in the description below. Do check it out, it's absolutely awesome. It's definitely fun to play around with these simulations and to create your own. And it's definitely a lot of uh, fun just learning these new concepts and new ideas or trying to create something that you wouldn't be, be able to create in a classroom either way. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Game you later. Check out some of the other educational video games I've taken a look at previously and also subscribe and like this video if you still haven't. See you later. Game you later. Bye-bye.